Stitches, it's Jenny of Jenny Stitches. Thank you for joining me again on my channel today. Um, and I've popped in today to have a chat to you about winter coats. So it is the middle of, well, the beginning of August and it might seem a bit of an odd time to be thinking about winter sewing, but sometimes in this hobby of ours, we have to think seasonally a little bit ahead of time. And I know a lot of you have already been in asking about coat projects and I know for a fact that there are a couple underway out there, which I'm very excited to see. So I thought I would give you a quick rundown of the coating fabrics that I've got in stock and um, just a few pattern suggestions to go alongside. So let's get into it. So um, I think a coat is quite a big project. It can be a little bit daunting. Personally, it's not something that I've tackled yet, but I know I have lots of customers that have. Um, and a lot of people like to make their coats in 100% wool because obviously it's very warm, natural fibre. Um, and here are some options for you. I'm just going to have a slurp of my tea. Now then. First up, I'm going to show you, this is part of last year's stock actually, but it's absolutely beautiful. This is the Heather Stripe 100% wool and you can see it has, I'm trying not to dip that in the tea, um, a very light herringbone kind of weave um, and multiple colours in it. So it's got the greens, the greys, the blues and the lilacs there. It's very pretty and it has a very a nice sheepy woolly smell to it and that kind of slightly scratchy sort of comforting wool feel. So that's a nice option if you wanted to make um, a wool coat and it's got a bit of interest in it, it's not plain. <clears throat> um, another excellent option is boiled wool. Again, um, I had this one in stock last year and I have it in this beautiful sort of pillar box red and a blue, which I call, I think it's marine blue and a lovely camel. I'll try and pop in a couple of pictures up there to show you. Um, boiled wool is, is essentially a bit like pre-felted wool. So it's it's reversible. It doesn't need to be lined, or you can line it if you want to. But that colour is just delicious. And it's quite, it's got a nice drape to it really. It's not overly stiff. It's gonna sit nicely over a coat. It's gonna be really, really sweet in one of the patterns that I'm going to show you coming up. So that's a lovely option. Just disappearing out of you <laughs> to get another bolt. Um, okay, this is possibly a little bit difficult to show on screen, but this is a navy. Um, I think this is a blend. Yep, this is 80% wool to 20% polyester. It's an Italian coating fabric and it is an ex-designer dead stock. I think this was for, this is an ex-Laura Rashley fabric. So that's got good sustainability credentials as well as being excellent value because for 80% wool that is only 12 pounds a meter. So it's fairly fine. Again, you could choose whether you wanted to line it or not, just depending on preference. Very nice indeed very sort of similar to that vein Woo. where are we i am just going to move this tea because it's an accident waiting to happen <laughs> this again is another italian wool and this is a blend 80 percent wool to 20 percent polyester again um but in this beautiful sort of natural oatmeal shade i'm very keen on this i think it's very wearable and i think it would look lovely in a formal sense and in a casual sense it would uh, it would um, sit nicely against denim I feel or maybe with a nice knit underneath it would set off a colourful knit but uh, yeah that's got a lovely texture and a lovely drape and handle which would sew beautifully into any number of coats. These are such big bolts to heave around <laughs> I literally couldn't get them all in one shot. <laughs> They all came into stock, um, the new ones came into stock during the heat wave and um, I had a shelf sort of designated that I wanted to reorganise them onto 
but I had to leave them sat there for the entire time that it was hot just because I could not face the idea of getting up and <laughs> throwing bolts of wool around in that heat it was just far too hot okay this is again another blend 80% wool to 20 poly um, and it's got it's black with a lovely sort of creamy white check and it's quite a large scale check you can see that up against me there and just within the check if I can just get that closer for you it's got a little bit of pink stitching so I think this is a nice classic sort of design I'm going to try that on there it would also make a nice cape or a poncho or um, maybe even just a scarf you could fringe that out into a scarf yes very nice they don't all have to be plain and the last of the wools I'm going to show you is this beautiful 100% lamb's wool coating this is just beautiful everybody who has been into the shop and seen this makes a fuss over it because I hope the camera is picking this up well the turquoisey blue shades in this are just so vibrant without being over bright but it's just it's lovely it's different it's different to the usual kind of tones that we have in and it would make a really really stylish coat and as I say it's 100% lamb's wool it's very soft it's not overly itchy um yes beautiful very excited about that one and I want somebody to go and make a beautiful coat in it so I can see it made up please okay the last thing I've got to show you here is I'll just pop the tag off or maybe I won't because maybe it'll get stuck is a lovely new to me fabric called soft coat now this is a blend of it is 80% polyester 18% viscose and 2% spandex so there's no wool content in this at all however it has the feel of a soft wool kind of coat um, fabric it's machine washable up to 40 degrees which I think is a very important thing to bear in mind because obviously the downside of wool is that it generally it does need dry cleaning and if you're anything like me and you spill repeatedly it's possibly not the best idea but this is an excellent option if you're a bit intimidated by the wool as well it's double sided so it's completely reversible and it comes in four colourways. I will pop some pictures up. I've got it in duck egg, grey, a blush pink and khaki. But I am, I am excited about this and I'm thinking of tentatively having a go at a first coat project myself. And I think with the way it hangs and drapes, it would hang very nicely into something that's maybe got a sort of waterfall structure to it. It would also make a lovely duffel coat. So I think that's got a lot of potential and, and I'm excited about these because I think it makes for an affordable and sort of easy wash option for making a coat instead of sort of investing a lot in a big piece of wool. Okay, on to the patterns. So um, as usual, I've been through and picked out a selection of patterns for coats which I think you might like to look at. There are a lot more available on the website. If you filter the patterns section by jackets, they should all come up under there. But these are just a few that I thought would look great in the fabrics that I've shown you and maybe give you a little bit of inspiration. So I'm going to go straight in with the Sew Over It 1960s coat. As always, I will pop a better picture of the pattern colour up here. Um, this was a new pattern released for Sew Over It onto paper last year. Um, Sew so, so Over It don't release many patterns onto paper anymore now, they're mostly PDF based. Um, but I have this one in stock and it's a very traditional sort of tailored design. And I just think it would look lovely in any of the fabrics that are featured here. Um, in particular, I think the boiled wool would be beautiful. And it, yeah. It's just lovely. It's very, very cute. I would 100% wear that one. Um, <clears throat> what else have I got to show you? 
New Look 6585. This is a much more relaxed, sort of casual, open-fronted option. But on there we've got um, three different lengths. So that's quite versatile and you've got the option of a hood or no hood, which can sort of dramatically change how casual it feels. Um, this one is not lined. So that's nice if you're a beginner and you're not wanting the hassle of putting a lining in and bagging it out, that kind of thing. So I think that's got a lot of potential. I'm quite sort of taken with that one. There's not even any buttons or buttonholes to tackle on there. So I think that's, that's got a good beginner potential. I don't think I could have completed this video without mentioning the Tilly and the Buttons Eden Coat. This is one of the patterns which Tilly is no longer printing onto paper. And this is my last copy of this pattern. So if you want it, this is the last one. It is still available on PDF download directly from Tilly and the Buttons, but it's a duffel coat. Um, I will probably show you the picture off the back because that shows it made up in a wool type. You can make that in any of the wools, um, but I do think in particular in that soft coat fabric that I've shown you, this would be a great, great option. And as always, you're gonna have Tilly's excellent instructions, which really hold your hand, which I think would be nice. And it's a very chunky pattern in there. Very nice. Okay, a little bit different is Simplicity 8509. This is out of the Simplicity Vintage range. And it's a very sort of open fronted, loose, Coat, very traditional, excellent for wearing over a dress with the lapel and the, the sleeves. It's very, very chic and stylish and I absolutely love this. And you could, you could make this in any number of fabrics and get a different result. So if it was lighter and more drapey, you'd get a, a looser sort of more flowing version, whereas you could do it in heavier wool and have a much more structured garment. So it's just utterly beautiful. Different again is Simplicity 8263. This is a cape with the little handy holes in it. Um, just a little bit different and I think this would look nice in any of the fabrics that are featured but I think in particular the blue lambswool check I would definitely like to see that made up in there. It would have a great effect over that shape. It's very very sweet and chic for the winter time. I have also pulled out as a bit of a different option the Friday Pattern Company Cambria Duster. Um, this is again a relaxed and loose fitting casual style of um, duster coat. So, and I don't think it's lined. So again, that's possibly a nice straightforward option. I think that would look lovely in the in the uh, oatmeal wool that I've shown you. Very nice. I've also pulled out Simplicity 8990 <laughs> and again that's got a belt on it, it's got this sort of unusual peplumy kind of shoulder detail which is nice and a crossover front so that's very very chic and stylish, I think that would be nice in any of those. And finally Simplicity 9186 which is a Mimi G style design. Um, I've pulled this out one out because it's just so different. It's got this amazing um, statement sleeve, which is just really cool and unusual. And I, I think that would look great. I'd love to see that made up. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you a little insight into what's in stock. I'll pop a link down below to all the fabrics and patterns that I've mentioned. Um, if you've got any questions, just let me know. I'd love to hear if you've made a coat, um, if you've got any tips to share, if I do have a go at making one this winter, I'd really love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe and I will hopefully be back next week with something similar. Take care and I will see you soon. Thank you.